chips in the landing zone. Do I care? Nope. Do they exist? Not as far as I'm concerned. Uh, how do I handle it? Same way I normally do as if the chips weren't there. It's the same land draft toss regardless. I don't try to land at a certain specific spot. Uh, I don't try to avoid the chips. I just imagine they're not there. All right, so I cannot promise you any long rolls. Can't promise you anything, but I do promise you that I will not try to avoid the chips. I'm just going to toss my regular way. Here go. All right, we got a five. And I look at it this way, guys. Even if the uh, dice do hit the chips, in my opinion, uh, because most of my tosses, by the time the dice get to the back wall, the energy has uh, almost completely dissipated. Uh, even if it hits the chips or a chip, uh, the force of impact will be very minimal. Here we go. Hit a chip and seven out. Well, I guess that's going to happen from time to time. So, it is what it is. All right. Let's try another one. Would you know it? <laughs> the same five that I missed the last hand. But once again, I'm not changing anything. I don't care about the freaking chips. Uh, if it hit the chips and goes out, it just hits the chips and goes out. But uh, I'm not even conscious of chips being down there. So it is what it is. Five one six. My opinion is if you're seven out, you're just seven out. I don't think it has anything to do with the dice hitting the chips. Uh, I think people use that as, as an excuse uh, for seven and out. So six two eight, six two eight. I think uh, it's probably best not to hit the chips, but I mean, you you can't say just because your dice hit a chip that that's what caused the seven. I I just don't believe that. I believe that's superstition. So.
and there's the five. So once again, that first seven out, first shorthand where the dice hit the chips. Yeah, you can blame it on the chips and all that, but nope, you know what I say? <laughs> I say I just seven out. In other words, had the chips not been there, I think it still would have been a seven out. So, just my opinion. All right, that's a uh, front line loser seven, uh, 12. All right, we got a 10 for a point. Three, two, five. And that three was actually leaning on a chip. <laughs> uh, barely, but uh, it did touch the chip, so. Having my morning cup of coffee as I toss, so that's a six three nine. Got a five one six. Four one five.
and that did crash the chips. Hit two of them. Hit this one. Shit, three of them. Hit this, this, <laughs> this, and that. Uh, and that's the 11, 6, 5, 11. That's a 426. It did hit the chip, but uh, it hit it very lightly. Once again, uh, just same for my regular spot. If a 7 out, hey, it's a 7 out. I don't think, once again, it's because the dice hits the chip and all that. Uh, do I believe uh, uh, that maybe you shouldn't hit the chips? Yes. But I, I just think that if the dice are not coming in uh, at a uh, very uh, forceful impact, I, I think it, it makes very little difference if uh, one of your die or both die hits the chips. Just my opinion. My advice, once again, uh, that's a three. My And that was a wild toss. Shit. Uh, my advice, once again, uh, if you have a phobia uh, against uh, with chips being at the uh, the back wall, avoid crowded tables. That's all I can tell you. See either that or you got to get over the phobia. That's a three. Okay, you hear a lot of stories about the uh, dome players stacking up mounds, uh, a tower of chips at the back wall to uh, encourage the uh, shooter to seven out and all that. Uh, makes me no difference. Uh, but once again, it does have a psychological uh, toll on some individuals. And for those individuals, I say, once again, avoid crowded tables. That's a five one six. Boy, those dice teetered right around the uh, chips. <laughs> Didn't hit anything, but uh, man, it came pretty close. Uh, I just believe that if you land the dice with this chopper toss far enough, far enough away from the back wall, you ain't gonna have no problems. I, I mean, it's you know, just dice gonna skip, skip, hop, trickle to the back wall like they usually do and uh may hit a chip may not i mean hell the first hand i hit a chip and seven out but once again i don't believe i seven out because the, the dice hit the chips i believe had the chips not been there it'd have been the same seven out That's a 628. I didn't like the way that one released. Uh, released way to the right, but uh, turned out okay. 628.
look at that six it spent it actually if you look at the video this one spent on top of the chip it was actually going in a horizontal spin and it's actually on top of the chip that's a six two eight uh well let me remove it six two eight so once again uh that's proof positive i mean hell that one <laughs> that one magnetized to the chip and uh it didn't seven out now it could have seven out but once again i don't believe in the chip theory That would be a hard eight. Woo, that left that hop. That is a banana split chocolate sundae with extra nuts. All right, that's a 639. That was an outstanding toss. Oh my god. Yeah, that one felt ooh, felt perfect. Haven't had had the feeling of one of those in a long time. Six uh five three eight. is a 6511 and i'll tell you something guys my my whole biggest pet peeve or problem with uh control tossing well i just say might just want to say uh any toss technique is the grip um if my grip never failed me uh, i'd be a monster i really truly believe that uh if i can uh, get that perfect tactile feeling of a, a perfect grip and release each and every time. I'd be a casino killer. That's a three two five. Yeah, that's the thing about it, man. Uh, when you know that your dice are releasing properly, it just gives you so much confidence. Uh, don't mean you ain't gonna seven out. I mean, you can still have point seven out short rolls and all that. But uh, when you know, just know the dice are not gonna slip out your hands, when you know they're gonna release properly, man, that is a, a very uh, <laughs> a very powerful feeling. Uh, 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 the epitome of confidence. I 
I'll put it to you this way. Even though I always uh, talk against uh, and don't recommend grave digging, I, I will truthfully say this. If I knew for a fact that my release was going to be perfect every time, my grip and release, I would bet grave digger. Uh, I don't think it's the smartest thing to do, but, uh, you know, I, I'm just telling you guys in any uh, game, sports, craft, uh, contest, uh, confidence is, is a, man, it's, it's a powerful thing. Now, there's a such thing as overconfidence, but uh, just, you know, knowing that you have that good tactile feeling uh, to know that your release is perfect each and every time, it's no better feeling uh, when you're tossing these dice. Right, that's a four one five. Now that release, it it was okay, but it felt just a little bit like it was too much overspin. Uh, and this is why I say, guys, you know, you have to uh, gauge your tosses uh, subliminally each and every time you release the dice. Uh, this is what's going to put you on a path to a uh, perfect grip and release. Once again, don't mean that you won't seven out. Don't mean that. Uh, you know, it does not mean you're going to have long hands, but once again, at least you know that you've done the job to the best of your ability. And that's all control tossing is about, guys. I mean, you release the dice to the best of your ability and you hope for the best. What is hope for the best? Primary hits and repeat numbers. Skeeter the repeater, my best friend. That's a two. Now look at this one. It did hit the chip right here. Not these three over. But uh, once again, it came in so lightly, uh, I just don't think it affected anything. Uh, all right, that's a two. All right, that release wasn't so good. I uh, did crash into two chips, uh, two piles. Not this pile over, not this pile over here, and it's still a hard eight, hard eight. So once again, uh, mm, that did go in kind of violently. I mean, you gotta be honest about it. You gotta call it like it is. Yep, that that was a bad toss. It went in violently. Um, I ain't gonna say I got lucky. Because, uh, once again, I don't believe that, you know, if you hit the chips, that's going to cause a seven. Let's just say it was a bad toss, and I got away with it. All right, well, we finally caught that 617 out. That toss was good. It just, I mean, dice just bounced back a little bit too far. All right, 617 out. Let's do one more hand. Uh, so for the gentleman that sent a comment about how to handle uh, chips in the landing zone, well, this is how I handle it. Uh, I just pretend they're not there.
perfect release. All right, that's a five. Point is five. Now, I'll tell you something. Two of the people on YouTube that I say uh, has the most consistent releases is George C.Y. and Sarge. Uh, very seldom, very rarely will you see the dice slip out their hands. Uh, very rarely. Uh, yes, they might have some wild tosses, uh, but it's not because of dice slippage. Uh, it's just, you know, bad execution. But very seldom will you see Sarge or Joyce C.Y. Uh, where the dice fly out their hands. Five one six. Here's the five. All right. Once again, uh, when I seven out, is this video will conclude. Uh, so I'm just going to keep tossing until the bad number comes. And that will conclude the video. And for the gentleman, once again, that asks about chips in the landing zone, my suggestion would be find you an empty table. If you have a phobia about it or uh, if you play on a... Uh, table with the uh, chips just imagine they're not there for example look at that one this is actually on top of the chip, and if you look at this video, uh, you have I don't know how many minutes into it, but uh, if you rewind and look at this toss, you'll see that uh, the two was actually uh, spinning horizontally on top of the chip. All right, that's a 527 front line winner. Oh, I turn it over. That was a 527 front line winner. Okay, this right dice actually did smack on top of the chip. That is a 516. If you remove the chip like the casinos would do, boom, it would be a 516. All right, six is the point. And actually, for this video, I'm doing something that I highly recommend not doing. I'm using bat axial dice sets, 2v, 3v, and cross sixes. Uh, I don't advise using them because the way this toss works, if your toss is not uh, <laughs> uh, dialed in, uh, it's going to be Heartbreak Hotel. Uh, if you look at my previous videos, it explains why the 2v, 3v, and cross sixes are such dangerous dice sets tossing the chopper.
Ooh, two escape prisoners from Rikers Island. Banana split chocolate sundae. That's a nine. Ooh, man, that was a horrible. Well, that was a good toss, man. They just split on me. All right, here we go. It was a three. One, two, three. Another banana split. Six four ten. They getting away from me, y'all. They getting away. A little while. A little while. Six four ten. That was a beautiful, perfect toss. Perfect. Oh, okay. I guess that other toss it hit, hit, hit that chip. I didn't even see it. All right, that's a four one five. Six five eleven. Six five eleven. Three, two, five. I'm going to give you guys a little advice. My advice would be to leave this toss alone unless you have a perfect grip and release. If you can master a snug grip where the dice don't slip out your hands, where they feel even each and every time, I would say proceed with this toss. Otherwise, stick to another toss. I'm just telling you flat out, uh, this toss is not made uh, for imperfections. It's just not. I'm, I mean, the toss was already originally designed for the top faces to spin horizontally when the dice land and not flip over. So that's what you're dealing with. So be with that being that... Um, that's almost impossible. <laughs> uh, you just have to have a, a perfect grip, guys. That's just what it is. Because the, the facial integrity uh, with the dice hitting the back wall and the top numbers not turning over and all that, it's not going to happen. So uh, the next best thing, you have to be tossing perfectly in order for the physics of the toss to work uh, like I showed you guys in my previous video. If you don't have your grip right, it's not going to work. Pure, nothing will work.
So my honest opinion about this toss, stick to par. Stick to Golden Touch. Uh, you'll end up uh, <laughs> probably having much more success. Uh, this is a 4-3-7 out. Now let me tell you why it would be. It's because the casinos, this dice is landing on the chip. What's leaning, they would simply pull the chip back. And voila, this would be a 4 we got a three over here, four, three, seven out. All right, so that's going to conclude this video. Uh, wasn't the greatest, you know, video in the world, but it, it just shows that, you know, I mean, I don't worry about chips because uh, I'm landing so far away from the back wall. Uh, by the time the dice get to the back wall, they have very little energy anyway. So uh, I just think that, you know, if you're tossing a toss technique with a uh, downward descent, uh, you know, like most, well, you know, I, I see guys now trying to keep the tosses lower with par and golden touch and all that. But you, you're still, it's still almost a looping effect. Uh, they try to make it a line drive, but it's it's still pretty much a looping effect. You land directly on the chip. And I'm not going to say it causes a seven out, but that's why you land, land uh, directly on a chip because they're aiming uh, with backspin and forward spin, well, particularly backspin, they're aiming, like, let's just say for here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or anywhere where there's a space available not to hit a chip, whereas with the chopper, you're landing somewhere up in this area, this big-ass area. Remember, you don't have to hit a target the size of a piece of lint. Uh, as long as they land flat, I'm going to say up around in this area here, skip, hop trickle to the back wall all right guys this is professor cage as always i'm spinning winning always grinning I like and subscribe uh to the gentleman that sent a comment about the uh chips in the landing zone once again uh, you have to get over the phobia of uh worrying about chips in the landing zone i would just say if you're tossing the chopper treat them as this you know as if they're non-existent uh your other option obviously hey don't play on crowded tables where people have chips uh at the end of the table or i mean if you have a lot of right side players you know no don't players that's you know put mounds of chips to cause you to seven out at the back wall uh, hey i would say politely ask the people hey can you move your chips to the left or the right all right anyway uh that's going to do it for this episode of uh cashier's cages uh chips in the landing zone Spinning, winning, always grinning, like, subscribe, and I'll see you right here. We're right here next time at the cage. Thanks for watching. Have a good morning.